All righty. Well, good morning, church. How does my mic sound now? I understand I was like uh, fading in and out. Can you hear me now? Can, yeah, you can. Can you hear me now? All right. Well, I'm sorry you couldn't hear me early. So let's go back and do that offering thing again. <laughs> uh, I know you're sitting there going, oh, please, Mark, don't talk about offering anymore. <laughs> Uh, not trying to make anybody feel guilty. Just want to let you know, man, we're a part of the solution. Amen? We're Listen, if not who, us, then who? If not now, then when? You know, oh, teenagers, I'm sorry. Y'all can be dismissed. My, my, my bad, yes. They don't want to come and listen to the old guy talk. So any teenagers, y'all are free to go uh, back to the classroom. Hey, turn with me in your Bibles to that passage that we read. 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, verse 17 through 19. 1 Timothy 6, verse 17 through 19. Now I can't tell you how exciting I am excited I am to um, to have our fall festival coming up. Man, it's a beautiful opportunity for you to serve, but not only that, but to invite someone to come to participate in all the fun and all the festive stuff to bring in the fall. I think we're going to bring in the fall sooner or later. It's going to be cold, right? I think so. Um, but um, it's going to be a great, great, great Saturday night. So I hope that you'll come out. Uh, for that but uh, this is our final message in kingdom first it's hard to believe it's been four weeks it is crazy isn't it uh how time flies turn the calendar to october come tuesday man it's just uh it's just nuts but anyway this is uh, our memory verse for the series kingdom first matthew 6 33 are you ready for the last time to uh say it with me i know you've got it memorized by now after four weeks matthew 6 33 Remember, now we did the NLT version where we'll say, and seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. So it's seek the kingdom of God above all else, and then he will give you, uh, and live righteously, excuse me, I, I don't even know it, and, and, and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. Can you do it? Should you sit down for this, or should you stand up? Y'all can see it. Okay, how about, I'm just kidding, that's good. All right, here you go, on the count of three. Is it on the board? On the, the, they don't call those boards anymore, do they? Are they on the screen? Okay, yeah, okay, we'll let you do it with it. This is your cheat sheet, okay? Count of three. One, two, three. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything. You need. One more time, ready? Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Take it off the screens, the amazing thing of magic. We'll leave that on the count of three. Say it without it. One, two, three. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. One more time. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need without me. Here you go. One, two, three. My work is done here for the day. <laughs> you just wish, right? <laughs> Let's pray together and then we'll dig into the scripture. Father, we love you. Father, we are grateful to be together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this one verse that we have broken down in so many ways this past month to remind us, God, how precious it is to be a part of this family. Lord, this family, eternal family, living together, working together, serving together, loving together, here on this planet. God, we would pray that you would forgive us of our sins. Lord, may we be pure and clean before you today as we dig into your word and we study a little bit more about this kingdom first mentality, this kingdom first lifestyle. So watch over us today is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. It's amazing. I heard this morning we were, had our 24 to double this morning, and they were talking about the importance of life groups, the importance of small groups, and and it was amazing that he said something that really kind of blew me away. Um, I'm sure the team remembers this. We live in America, one of the most populated things, most, one of the most places in all the world, one of the places where you, uh, people, anything you need, everything you want, people are right at your fingertips constantly, 24/7. But yet we live in the loneliest country in the world if you ask people isn't that crazy see we're trying to break that cycle here to let you know how important we are to one another the kingdom of god living life together 
laughing when we need to laugh, being sad when we need to be sad, helping each other when we need to do all that. There's just nothing as precious as being a part of the kingdom of God. Some of you may still need some convincing, but, you know, we need the strength of one another just to get through the pressures of life because without the Lord and without one another, it's someone to talk to and to share with and to encourage. Man, it can get pretty stressful and pretty crazy out there, can it? It really can. It can even get that way in our own homes, right? In the safety of our own homes before we even walk out the doors. Listen, we live in a crazy world, and why would we want to do life alone? You know? Why be married, have a family, have a church family, have friends, if we're just still going to do life alone? That's a tough way to be. It's a tough way to live. That's the reason why I think this message series is so important to remind you of all the different things that we have in common and why we are together because this, my friends, is a glimpse of heaven. And if we think heaven is going to our own comfortable places and spaces and tuning everybody else, heaven's going to be a tough place for us when we get there. <laughs> because God knows, and this guy said it this morning, that after God created everything, and created man, he realized, man, it's not good to be alone. It's not good to be alone. We need each other, my friends. You see, this world throws so many idols at us, so many things that become idols. You know, an idol is anything that takes the place of God, right? We shared that with you all month. So idols can be our jobs. It can be our money. It can be our, I mean, it can be our pursuit of pleasure. It can be all different kinds of things. And it can just really, really, if we're not careful, so many things will take the place of God. And then we'll wonder deep down inside our soul why we feel a little bit empty even though we can be surrounded by people because we haven't fully taken in everything that Jesus Christ has to offer and develop those relationships with other people that we call Christians. And so we need each other more than ever to overcome those idols, to give us the strength and to challenge us to be better people. Listen, each and every week we get together, you challenge me to be a better person. I hope that you're challenging your neighbor. You're challenging your friends. I hope we are challenging each other to be our best self, which is to be more like Jesus Christ. That's what he needs, and so we need each other so that we can do away and overcome all the different kind of idols that we have in our lives and rid ourselves of those kind of idols. What we're talking to you today about generosity, there's nothing more idolized in this world than our money, our time, and our talents. True? Because we build ourselves up, we get our encouragement, we get our self-esteem, we get our worth, we get our purpose, we are driven so much by the more bigger our bank account is, the more talented and gifted people think I am and want to be able to go and do whatever we want to go and do. We make those things, our resources, our time, and our talents, one of the greatest idols of all and we must break that my friends listen carefully to me there's enough talented people out there in the world who don't know jesus christ to make all that tick who are wanting the self-praise for the good that they do there's enough people out there in the world doing all kinds of things with their money that doesn't necessarily help the kingdom of god that's why we need one another and our resources together those are the people going out there in their lives, living lives like our culture tells us to do, to go out and to work and to play as wide open as we can till we just, just fall flat and we've just had enough. The world programs us to never, never think, to just keep going, to be busy. And I told you throughout this whole series, if we're a part of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is first, we've got to break that cycle. You've got to break it. I've got to break it. Some of you are going, Pastor Mark, that's impossible. It's not impossible. It's a matter of priority. Let me show you this passage, this thing that I found this past week that, that I thought was pretty, pretty challenging. I forgot to put it on there, so if you're wondering what's happening, it's not on the board. This is what it says. This guy said this. He said, the choice to grow always involves a decision. Listen carefully. Between risk and comfort. The comfortable thing to do is keep doing what you're doing for me to keep doing what I'm doing. This is what he says. This means as a follower of Christ, we must renounce comfort as one of the ultimate and most important values of our lives. That's crazy.
crazy, isn't it? If you really want to grow, it's time to take a risk and to do something differently. The things that we, we keep, so many people come up and talk to me about their life and talk to me about the world, and that's great, and I appreciate that. But the truth is this. Some of you, it could be you, it could be others, I don't know, have been telling me the same thing for years. That's called what? Insanity. Because if you really want the cycle to break, You've got to take a risk to get out of that comfort zone. It's comfortable going and letting the world tell you, okay, I need to work 40, 50, 60, 70 hours this week. I need to play ball on the weekends, or I need to go have fun on the weekends, or I need to, that's what the world tells us, man. It's all work hard, take all that, or go play hard and spin, spin, spin. It's all about you. How's that working out for us? So many people's families are falling apart. They're struggling. They're stressed out. They've got too much time to pour into their own kids, to pour into their marriage, to pour into their friendships. There's nothing left, and yet we wonder, and we're stunned by some of the statistics that I shared with you, that six of seven people in the place that we live, their lives are falling apart. Could we be one of those six or seven? We may come to church, and we make time for church, but really... Have we made time to make the change? To break that idol? Because, you see, Satan is a master, isn't he? He is a master when it comes to our resources and what we do with those resources. When it comes to our time and the way our time is used and our talents. The master trying to get us to use those for anything else but God. You see, this is why this grieves me so much. God always loses. And it drives me insane. It does. It drives me insane when people know the truth and they know where their hope should be found, but they still look exactly and live exactly like the world does. God always gets the leftovers. So the question is, when are we going to start living the truth and making the change and taking a risk? It's comfortable to keep doing what we're doing. It's comfortable to be in debt. But is that the best thing for us? It's comfortable to use our talents for our own personal gain rather than using it to lead someone else closer to the Lord. It's comfortable saying, okay, Monday through Friday is the world's, Saturday and Sunday is all about me. And then God gets no time. I'm just asking the question, because I I told you all along, this was the dig a little deeper Sunday. To look into the kingdom first. To look into our real priorities to look into the things that really matter. Listen to what he says right here. Paul says in 1 Timothy 6, let me read it to you one more time. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Another translation says for our existence. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, listen to this, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. You see, Paul's trying to tell a young Timothy who's fixing to start leading the church and starting to lead a young church He's trying to share with them the right way to think about a lot of different things. To have the right and proper perspective about things. You see, because whenever we have the right perspective about our lives, then it leads to the right responses in our lives that ultimately is the kind of outcome that we want. But instead, what we do, we live by our outcomes. It's all about the end goal. Or whatever it is to get to the end goal. And sometimes we don't pay attention to the process enough to get us to the end goal. 
And let me just say this. The end goal for you and I is not just retirement. Making sure that we have enough money to be comfortable so we can give up this place and go into our own hole. I'm not saying that anybody retired does that. But a lot of folks think, I mean, if I can just make it to 58 or 62 or whatever the age, and I got enough money, man, it's, it's all about me. So let me just say this for a minute. Danny Shoemaker and I were talking about this past weekend. You know, pastors over at Monroe used to be first pitcher in Stone Mountain. How so many times over the years we've seen so many families that have lived for that. And then once retirement hits them, they don't have enough money, they didn't plan very well, or somebody gets sick and their partner dies. I'm just telling you, it's just a hard way to live. Let's wait till we get to there. Remember I shared with you last week, Jesus is crying out to us and saying, I'm here right now. Let's live life right now. Let me start from the end. You know what Paul says to Timothy in this passage of Scripture? At the very end, listen to what he says. In this way you will lay up treasures for yourselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. He's talking about heaven. But he says in the meanwhile, listen, so that you may be take hold of a life that is truly life. You want to know what a life of meaning, a life of significance, a life of purpose is whenever we're willing to share everything we've got with anybody who needs a helping hand. He's talking about a life of meaning, making a difference in somebody else's life. Those are the things that really matter. You see, we think all this sort of stuff and we're, we hear it over and over and we think, okay, that's the greatest thing. Let's get there. Ooh, and this relax and it's pull away from the world and it's all about me. That rarely, rarely happens. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We are not promised tomorrow. We're not promised next week. We're not promised six months from now. But we live like it. But every day are we not constantly surprised when we hear of another tragedy or hear of a friend of ours or somebody that we know, something else. But somehow or another, we have this thing that it will never happen to us. And I'm telling you, my friends, you just don't know what today holds or tomorrow or each day that stretches out before you. Today is the day of the Lord. What are we going to do in this day to help our life be a life of significance and meaning and pour ourselves into those that we love and help somebody that needs a helping hand? I was corrected. Jenny came and told me about that family a little bit. I, I was wrong. I was thinking they'd been there a couple of months. They'd been living in a camper from campground to campground for two years. Now, I bet you they didn't start off thinking they were going to be there that long. Listen, I'm not being judgmental. I, I'm just telling you. Who would be their Jesus? Say, I've got a place for you. Here's a helping hand. Let's do something to make a difference in your life. You see, generosity is a selfless thing. And if we can't be generous as the people of God, and our priorities are just like everybody else's priorities, remember, never forget, the Scripture says, we've been studying this on Wednesday night, here at the church that we are aliens and strangers in this world. We are. Because our lifestyles and our our priorities and our planning is different. It's different. But do we sense that? Do we live that? Are we obedient to that? Let me break this down and then we'll be done today. Listen to what he says. I think it's it's a pretty cool deal. It really reminds us where we're at. He says, command. Two different times he says command. Paul saying, Timothy, you tell these people this is what needs to happen. Command them. Listen to what he says. Command those who are rich in this present world. He said, take a look. Big perspective. We're all wealthy. We're all wealthy. We really are. The 
the place that we live, the things that we have, the stuff that we've accumulated. And he's talking about in this present world, understanding to know that wealth can pass us by really quickly. You can have it one minute, and boom, it's gone the next. It's like water in your hands, trying to cup it and trying to hold it. No matter how much you make, this world demands it from us, and we pour it out. It's there for a moment, looking good in that bank account, and boom, one thing happens, and it's gone. But he's saying, command them. Not be wealthy, as the world says, and to thank God where they're at right now. And he says this, not to be arrogant or put your hope in that bank account. Listen, we tie a lot of our hopes and dreams to that bank account, don't we? We do. When the bank account's full, man, we are off living life like crazy, all kinds of stuff. Oh, all of a sudden, when it's gone... It's a whole different perspective, isn't it? He says, don't put your hope in all that stuff, which is so uncertain, but to put your hope in God, who does and richly provides us with everything that we need for our existence. He says, command. Not just about money. Let's move past that. Command them to do good. He's telling us to do good. Use your wealth. Now he gets into our time. Now he gets into our talents. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. He says, in this way you'll lay up treasures for yourself. God just wants to know. God just wants to know. He's not asking you to give it all away. He's just saying, if someone needs it, are you willing to help them? That's what he's saying. See, don't be arrogant and think that this is just yours. And life is just about you. He's saying be humble because maybe there might be a time when you're in need. Maybe there's someone you know in need right now and you've been fighting it. Whether you should help them or not help them. Because we still got all the things in front of us that we still want. But he's saying command them not to think about just the here and now, but to think about all eternity. Think about the good that we're going to do for eternity. Every new thing that we go and buy, that's pretty cool. But guess what happens after we drive it off a lot or after we move into it or after we wear it for the first time? It becomes what? Used. And then all of a sudden it loses a little bit of its glitter, glitz and glamour, right? But yet now we're stuck with whatever it was. It's just a challenge. He said, because if we have the right perspective, if we take a big picture look and we understand what all we've got and we understand that there is a need out there, are we willing to help when called upon to help? Because I promise you, everyone in this room, you know someone who needs your help. You do. I do. The question is, what are we going to do with that? We've got to take the big picture view and ask ourselves, if we don't help, who is going to help? What does Paul tell us in 1 Corinthians 12, chapter? We are the body of Christ. We are his arms. We are his legs. We are his mouthpiece. Listen to me. We're his checkbook. We're his wallet. So that we can help other people just like we've been helped. Listen, I came to know the Lord off the street. living in a campground myself in the back of a car so someone invited me to church hmm. I wonder what kind of life I would have settled into had it been for Cindy and my youth pastor Rob and a couple other friends along the way who took interest in me and said, nope, there's a church for you to go to, here's a place for you to stay, we're going to get you a job, we're going to do what we're going to do. I don't know. You see, the response is, please don't be arrogant. 
Don't be arrogant. Be willing to give. Be humble. Be humble. Because I promise you, you cannot outgive God. If you give your money away freely, if you give your time away freely, if you give your talent away freely to somebody else, God will bless you tenfold. You'll have more than you ever can imagine. I tell people all the time, everything that I have is because of I became a Christian. And God has done the rest. He's done the rest. And I have plenty of stuff. But what means most important is when you hear somebody say yes. Is there anything more precious than that? I don't know. Using your resources, your time, and your talent to make a difference in somebody's life, who knows what they'll do, what they'll become, and what the kingdom can become if they become a part of this church family. Yep, that perspective, having a big picture view, leads us to the response to not be arrogant and to share. And the outcome is a living a life that is truly life. We were talking about this Wednesday night at the study. I think one of the greatest things to do is to wake up in the morning and look at yourself in the mirror and be at peace with who you are. I think one of the greatest things is right before you go to bed and you look in that mirror one more time, be able to be, look at yourself and be at peace with who you are and where you're at. I don't think there's anything any better than to be at peace. And I believe one of the greatest ways to be at peace is just to be generous. Just to be generous. I'm not asking you to go sell everything and go live in a I don't know what are those places called where hermits live. Um, a monastery. I don't know if that's it or not. I just said that. No, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just asking you to start where you're at today. Imagine your life without the Lord and the difference that you could make like someone's made in your life. And I promise you, each and every day you look in that mirror in the morning and evening time, you'll be okay with who you are. Because we're humble enough to know that we, you, and me, it's up to us. We are the arms, the hands, the legs, the feet, the mouthpiece of Jesus. I'm just going to ask you right now just to call upon your mind and your thoughts for just a second on just where you're at in life and what is the dominating thought process in your life. And ask yourself if that could be replaced that worry, that care, that concern, could that be replaced if we decided to be totally unselfish and let generosity flow from our lives? I bet you a lot of that could be settled because it will rearrange the priority of the things that are most important to you. Thank you for listening to me today. Thank you for this series, Kingdom First, I know it's been a challenging series. I hope and I pray that it's no longer weird or no longer strange or foreign to you to think about that these are the people that we'll do eternity with. And everybody else that's put their faith and trust in Jesus and building disciples and living for the Lord. Make no mistake about it. The scriptures tells us that wide is the road that leads to destruction. But narrow is the road that leads to eternal life. And only few will find it. I hope and I pray that that few is us and that few reaches thousands and thousands and millions and millions because we were willing to make a difference, to live it 
and to share it with others. God is calling you today to do something different. Today. I'm asking you to do it. To be obedient. And I promise God will bless you like never before. And that feeling in your heart, in your mind, will be one of peace. Maybe for the first time in a long time. I'm going to ask the band to come forward. While they're getting ready, we'll do this and then we'll be done. I, I believe Miss Miss Virginia is going to come forward. Come on up, bud. Um, Miss Virginia Knight is going to come forward today. This is a, a pretty neat deal. He's going to come help her up here. Um, she would. She, she